This is Lee with Crash Test Hobby, showing you how to build a plane that won't crush, that flies well, great plane for small parks. This is our albatross. These are the parts you'll find in your kit. We are continuing on with the build of the fuselage. Start by gluing two layers of Formica on the nose, whether you're building the nose mount or the pod mount design. The nose is supposed to be angled. Mark location of the dowels back 9 inches, back 20 inches, and use a razor blade to cut a slit more than 3 quarter inch deep. With a twisting motion, put the dowel into the slit. Put your wing on the fuselage and make sure that everything is aligning, that the rubber bands will fit. Then put a mark, we're going to show you how to install the pod, and just using a screwdriver, punch a hole through the fuselage, making sure the hole is straight down from the top of the fuselage. The foam is expandable, so as you grab the pod, you can just push it down the hole with a little bit of force, but it has to be square with the top of the fuselage, as you're seeing. You can also use a drill if you have one, and drill the hole out with a half inch bit, but once again you need to make sure it's square. Now removing the dowels and the pod, we're using a soldering iron just to open the holes for later. We're going to trim the tail. Cut three and a three quarters inches off to make a notch where the tail will sit. You need to make sure that the tail has move, room to move up and down. This plane has LED lights installed. If you're going to install LED, LED lights, it's better to do it before you tape and laminate. These are some of the planes which have LED lights. And this is some sky painting I did with a time exposure on a camera on an albatross plane. Using Scotch Extreme Tape, tape the fuselage on all sides back 11 inches from the nose of the plane. I use strips of tape and then scissors I cut into each time there's an angle and just fold the tape over. You want this to be light but this keeps the nose from breaking. The foam won't tear, or the foam won't crush and the tape won't tear so it's an extremely strong combination especially on a slow flying plane. Let's do the other side. By wrapping the tape around the corner, it also keeps you from having edges of the tape on the corners of the plane. Once again, cut into the corners. Start at the back and fold them forward. That way you don't have an edge that's going to catch later. And wrap the nose of the plane. This prevents your motor from falling off if you're doing a nose mount motor and trim off any excess. Around the back dowel, put a strip of tape around the fuselage. This makes it so that dowel cannot pull out of the foam even in a wreck. And then put a strip of tape on the bottom that ties it into the front of the plane. That keeps the rubber bands from bowing the fuselage if you get too many rubber bands on. Now is the time to paint or use magic markers to color your fuselage before you laminate. In this case, I didn't get it done and I'm back painting a plane that is already assembled. It's easier to do it before your tail is glued on. But just a little bit of paint changes the entire appearance of your plane. In this case, I'm using Krylon Fusion Paint, which is for plastics and a very light coat doesn't change CG very much. I masked with duct tape or even the extreme tape is a good masking tape. And you can get all kinds of colors and patterns. We're now going to show you how to laminate the plane. I like to do it in one piece of laminate and I start on the top of the plane. Because it's flat, it gives you a good starting point. 
doing the top, then one side, then wrapping it around the bottom. And then just like the extreme tape, I trim it in with scissors on the corners. Make sure that your iron is the right temperature. If you are too cold, the laminate won't stick well. If you're too hot, it will change the shape of the foam. There's a trick to stretching out the laminate to get the wrinkles out as you go, but it's easy to learn. This method leaves two layers of laminate on the bottom where the fuselage gets the most wear and tear as the plane lands on the grass or ground. Once again, trimming into the corners. You want to work from the back forward so that all of your seams overlap in such a way they don't pill up if the air or sliding on the ground is, is pulling it up. Uh, if you overlap from the uh, back to the front, everything has an edge that's sealed. I'm cutting out the section for the tail. You want to glue the tail to EPP foam so there is no laminate on that notch. Taking a soldering iron, I cut through the laminate on all the dowel holes and the other hole you're seeing on the top of the fuselage just so I can squeeze glue into that dowel. We're going to glue the pot in place. I put some glue, enough to hold that, especially down at the bottom of the fuselage as I push the glue down. And then I start working glue around the top of the pod and roll the dowel. The dowel will get glue on it and as you roll it, as long as the glue is hot, it will help to spread it all the way around the dowel and seal the dowel in. And you do the same thing on the back dowel. We're going to glue the tail down. Now make sure that you keep the tail as light as possible. Every ounce you add to the tail takes about three ounces in the nose to balance it out because of where the CG is. We're now going to install the rudder. I draw a line where I'm going to put the rudder. Then taking my soldering iron, I punch a row of holes so that the glue can get down in the foam and through the laminate. And then using my glue gun, I fill those holes up. Once again, trying not to add too much weight, but the rudder is extremely stable and well attached with this method. Then make sure that it's at 90 degrees to the horizontal tail. I add a little extra glue just to keep it from flopping from one side to the other. So this is what the planes look like. It's time to build planes that will last. You're going to continue on now with video three which shows how to wire your radio and to motor and speed control. Thanks for watching. This is Lay with Crash Test Hobby.